In this video, we'll talk about using track automation in conjunction with Send, Submix, Output Bus, and Master Tracks. It's mostly the same as with regular audio and MIDI tracks, but there are a few minor differences. One concept that's helpful to understand is automating the difference between the level being sent to a track effect versus the Send Track's output volume. Here's a typical Send Track with a VST Effects plugin on its insert. We have a virtual instrument track sending dry signal to the Send Track with its automation. The dry signal then goes to the Send Track's inserted effect. So in this way, you'll adjust how much signal gets sent to an effect's input. This can be important because too little signal can result in not much effect, and too much can distort the effect's input. In the case of Mixcraft's classic delay shown here, the effect itself has input and output level knobs, but many effects won't. The output of the VST effect now returns back to the send track, and the send track's mixer fader controls the output volume of the inserted effect to the master mix bus. Finally, you can use the send tracks automation in the track window to automate the level of the send track fader. Let's take a look at how the signal flow idea is illustrated in the diagram work in the context of a project. Here I have a virtual instrument track with a Messiah virtual synthesizer. And I have a MIDI part I've recorded right here. I'm going to open up a send track by pressing the plus track button and choosing add send track. And now I'm going to add an effect to the send track by pressing the effects button. And I'm going to use classic delay. And to make it really easy to hear the dry signal versus the affected signal, I'm going to pan the dry signal hard left, and the send channel with its effects hard right. Right now, no signal is being sent to the send channel, so if I play back, you'll only hear the dry signal in the left channel. In order to send some signal to the send channel so we can hear the effects, I'm going to press the automation button on the track, and I'll click the pop menu right here and select send one. Now you'll notice that this says 2 in parentheses, and that just means it's track number 2 in our project. But the name of it, as you can see, is Send 1. And this turns to Send 1 right there. And you'll see a Send knob appears right here. Now by turning this knob up, I'll now be sending signal over to this Send track and its effects. And if you listen to the right channel, you can hear the echo. Now if I adjust the Send level, you can hear the amount of effect comes and goes. If I have the track in unlocked automation mode, that means that adjusting the automation will add and subtract from whatever this level is. So here you can see the level gets a little lower. And then comes back up. But if I put it in locked mode, you can see that the automation line actually controls this knob right here. If you remember from the diagram, I explained that the send level from the track controls how much signal goes into the input of the send channel effect. But we still have our send channel itself with its own volume. So we can control the volume here. And this actually controls the output of the effect. So you can hear it'll start loud. And slowly disappear. The automation lock control works the same way. If I click this on for the send track, you'll see its fader is actually going to move with the automation line. And keep in mind, if I open up the mixer, you can see all these same movements. One important difference between send tracks and conventional audio and MIDI tracks is that at least one lane of automation is always showing. And that's why the X right here is grayed out. If I press the plus button and display a second automation parameter, panning for example, now the X is return. But if I click the X to hide one of the automation parameters, you'll see that the X turns gray again. This works the same way with submix, output, and master tracks. Finally, I'd like to talk about using automation on the master track. Now the most obvious use for master track volume automation is to do fade outs at the end of a song like this. but you can do a whole lot more. Let's say, for example, that you've got a whole suite of mastering plugins set up. In this case, I've got a vacuum tube compressor first, followed by a parametric equalizer, followed by a final limiter. Well, let's say you had a section in a song where a certain frequency was particularly strident and you wanted to cut it back. Let's add another lane of automation. Then I'm going to switch this over to the parametric equalizer. So here's the parameter right here in the automation list. And I've selected that. 
Let's make this a little bigger so we can see it a little better. So here it is right here. And I'll add some automation here to dip it down. And I can bring it back up. And now let's listen. Watch the knob. And back up. 